Hallelujah. Everybody, let's give God a highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
we all go in. Amen. Truly, we thank God for everybody coming here tonight. Amen. I'm all in. Oh, gosh, I'm all in. Mm, I'm having a moment here. Hey, I got my seat coach I'm all in. I'm all in. Oh, God. I'm all in. I'm all in. Life. Life has some ups and it has some downs. But I have to trust God. And when things happen that I don't even understand. I don't even have an explanation for. It don't make me turn my back on God. It don't change my profession. I'm still all in. Amen. Right here we have a special presentation on that song, um, Sister Isla and Brother uh, Rod to come forth with their special presentation. Generation, we've been talking about putting up a banner for JG for a while. Right. Right. We finally going to make it happen. All right. All right. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful realizer. They're the church of now. Church of now. And one of the pastor's vision is he didn't want to be him to be ready to leave the scene, then pass it off to somebody. But trust them now. Let them work now. Realize the weight of what we're doing so they can see the seriousness of what we're doing. Look at your neighbor and say, it's all for time. It's all for time. Come on. I need some noise in the house. Come on. It's all for time. This vision, vision, this is vision service. So we have a vision offering. When the pastor asks everybody to give a special offering tonight. Amen. We're going to start this offering off with $50. Amen. $50. This is a special offering tonight. So please, and if by chance if you left the house and you didn't bring any cash, you're also able to contribute electronically through our cash app. There's dollar sign the way church, 6600. Dollar sign the way church, 6600. If you have any trouble that sees, we want to please see one of our usher staff and they'll be glad to assist you with it. Further service in the hands of the ushers, I get a song from the musicians.
the bit of liberality and given. We come to further service over to the hand of our pastor, Pastor Martin Scott.
ain't making any deposits there. Ain't no need to get mad with them because you go to make a withdrawal and you haven't made no deposit there. Well, y'all don't like what I'm saying. They gonna laugh you out of the bank because they know you don't have no accounts there. Praise the Lord. What, what am I trying to tell you? Don't try to make any withdrawals out of an atmosphere that you refuse to make a deposit in. How many really need to hear from the Lord on tonight? If you need to hear from God, I tell you to deposit a prayer. National Church of God in Christ. Amen. Can we make some noise for the man of God as he comes forth? And remain standing until he tells you so. Psalms 47 and 1 says, Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Let me say it again. Psalms 47 and 1 says, Clap your hands, all ye people, everybody, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. You're glad about being in the house of the Lord. Why don't you go down the road and say, neighbor, let me prophesy to you today. 
there's a breakthrough on this road. Alright, let me about myself. Tell somebody there's healing on this road right here. That's Alright, we get close to it. Tell them there's joy on this road. Come on, tell them. Some of y'all with depression been trying to overwhelm you, but I dare you to prophesy one more time and say there's joy on this road. Why don't, why don't you tell somebody, tell them, I don't know what you need by the end of this week, but there's a miracle on this road. Come on. As a matter of fact, go up and down your road and touch as many people as you can and say, miracle, miracle, miracle. There's a miracle. Oh! As a matter of fact, some of y'all been living in a deficit. Won't you go one more time down your road and tell them there's some money on this road. Come on, tell them. Anybody need some increase in your life? Anybody need some deliverance in your life? Anybody need a miracle in your life? Why don't you put your hands together and hiss the devil away? be seated. We honor the Lord for being here to all of you, my father's children, who have amalgamated here in the beauty of holiness. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord, for a day in his courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. I just want to ask, how many people are y'all glad to be here? I, said, I love you. I said, how many, how many of y'all glad to be here in the house of God? Tell somebody I'd rather be hidden in the best hospital in town. I'd rather be hidden in the finest graveyard in the land. If the devil would have had his way, I'd be locked up somewhere. But don't be under God that always causes us to triumph through Jesus Christ. Why don't you tell somebody I got the victory? I don't, I don't plan on being here long, but I just need y'all to work with me. I feel in this pulpit, it's been a whole lot of preaching in this pulpit. And it's hard to compete with that anointing that's in this pulpit. But I just need y'all to just work with me a little while so that I can get this simple Sunday school lesson out to you. Because I believe God wants to say something to you tonight. Look at your name and say, God wants to speak directly to you tonight. That's why you were able to fight through all of your ethnic fatigue. You know, that's when you get eat and get sleepy. That's what we call ethnic fatigue. You were able to fight through that. You fight. You fought through drama this week. You fought through all kinds of trials and tribulation and, and, and upheaval and hateration and all kinds of stuff. You fought through all of that, all the shade that you fought through on social media just to get to this point in time for God to speak a word to you, look at your name and say, there is a word from the Lord. I am so glad to be at the Way Church. I am so happy I arrived at this church before you got here. I arrived at this building before you got here. I was getting, getting ready to get my hair cut. And your pastor interrupted my place in line and said, I know you got to get your hair cut, but I want you to come see and bless this place that we're getting. And so we came, well, none of this was here. We just walked around and he said, well, Pastor, what do you think I ought to do here? And how you ought to fix here? And, I, and we just walked around and started talking and, and then we prayed and the Lord blessed you to be here. And uh, I thank God. Ain't nothing like peace. Let me say that. There's nothing like peace. Look at your neighbor say, you need to keep your peace. Amen. Hold your peace. The Bible says, hold on to it. And let the Lord fight your battle. And I'm so glad to be here. And I'm so glad that you have one of the greatest leaders in Christian dumb. I thank God for this young old soul. And Apostle Marcus Scott. I, I thank God for my sister, Lady Scott. God bless you. Man. And, and, and uh, um, I, I, you know, I never, they are so supportive of me and my ministry. And um, 
everything that I do, they want to be included in on, and um, every now and then they'll slide a little something in my hand and, and uh, treat me like I'm not, I know I'm not the bishop, but they treat me like I am, but, but uh, I just give God praise for him, he's such an encourager, and um, you know, when preachers get together, they need an opportunity to talk. And he gives me an opportunity to talk. I don't have to be superintendent all the time with him. I can be Braxton and tell um, him how much y'all getting on my nerves. <laughs> Listen, let, that's, that, how many of y'all got siblings? You, you know when mama left the house and mama made y'all clean up the whole house and you, wanted, you had other plans, you talked to your sibling like, Mama get on my nerves. I always want, but she going out. I, I want to go out. Yeah, I don't know y'all did that. So you need an opportunity to kind of vent to people, and I thank God for him, and I give God praise for his lovely wife. I, I was jealous when I saw them in Cabo. I said, Lord, Lord, have mercy. I just need my toes to touch some sand. Amen. And um, I'm so glad for the first time today. I got my girlfriend with me. I got my wife of 20 years. She, was, she didn't make service this morning. She was attending to, to she was attending to my daughter who was a little under weather, and so she wanted to break out tonight. So we made our oldest stay home and attend to our daughter so she could get some church because uh, you don't want her to go into a week without no church. Eh? <laughs> Amen. I give God praise for all of the sons and daughters of Agape. And, I got to understand. Watch out, Stephen. They love the way church. I bless you. We're so glad to have you here today. I thank God for um, um, Brother Justin Love. I, I, I didn't forget about the engagement. I just forgot to tell them about it. But um, he said, well, Pastor, wherever you want, I'm there. And I, you know, you need those kind of ride about yes, people with you. Yes, that you ain't got to be perfect with. Come on, talk to me. Yeah, I, I could go down the road, but I ain't gonna go there. I ain't gonna go there. Yeah. Thank God for my deacon. He's the oldest deacon. I remember he's the oldest member I have. And I thank God for him. He's well in his 90s. 90, 92. Come on, stand up. Let him see you. Amen. If you don't feel like standing, it's all right. 92, you can sit down all you want to. Don't, don't fool with him now. He'll, he'll dance you under the table. Some of y'all, and he, he's got, yeah, two hip replacements. One, hip, yeah, one or two hip replacements. Hip replacements. Yeah, two hip replacements, and he'll still dance right now. Some of y'all got the hips you came here with. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to use the hips you came here with to give God to him. Glory. I, I am anticipating God to say something to us, and I promise you, I didn't bring my two-hour sermon with me today, but I'm anticipating God speaking to us tonight. He spoke to us so succinctly and powerfully, and there was so much clarity today, and as I was praying, I, I thought I was going to be able to minister something else, but the Lord told me to stay in the vein that I was in this morning. And so um, I just want to do a part two to what those of us heard this morning. Um, again, I know that y'all are not um, void of preaching. Your pastor is one of the best to do it. Um, but I just want to come and share with you um, in addendum to what he said this morning. A amen. I promise the Lord that every time I mount the pulpit, that is not my own, that I will be a blessing to the pastor that I came. I've been doing it since last year, and the Lord has blessed my ministry. Amen. Um, uh, my my uh, booking secretary is in the back there, and we are creatively trying to find places where we can plot in. We Today, we discovered that we had two services in two sides of Virginia next month, and um, um, so... God is blessing me because of a commitment that I made to him. 
I will, see, let me help you. Wherever you want to grow, that's where you need to sow. Come Y'all, yeah, let me tell you, let me tell you, talk, talk to the Joshua generation. Don't you dare develop a stingy spirit like some of these people over here. Because if you learn how to give now, you will be reaping harvests and seeds well into your old age. Let me tell you something about me. I always have. There's not a time that I don't have. I, the reason why I always have, I'm not bragging, I'm just boasting in the Lord. The reason why I always have, Elder Kennedy, thank God for my assistant pastor being here today. The reason why I always have is because I always keep. And the church is the only place where talking about money is taboo. I went, when I was in college, we went to uh, Columbus, Ohio, to, uh, I think it was Cincinnati, maybe it was Cincinnati, Ohio. We went to the NAACP, um, they, they, our college choir went to the NAACP, uh, uh, they had a fundraiser there, and the people were jumping up with 5,000, 20,000, 30,000, 50,000, and they were just so excited about it. Now, then those people knew it was for scholarship fund, but they didn't track the every dollar. I promise you every dollar that money they gave didn't go to a student. Some of it went to administrative costs. Somebody got a little greedy and made it put a little something something in their pocket for the weekend. But the people didn't stand there and watch the bucket to see if they were going to allocate everything. All they wanted to do was to get their money out of their hands and into the scholarship fund. Because there is a principle that when you give, God makes sure that you get it back. And when you get it back, it's always larger than when you get it back. I feel like that. Where is it? I ain't preaching yet. I ain't preaching yet. And, and so don't 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 be stingy. Learn how to give now. Not just give to the church, but learn how to give to people. Learn how to give to others. Have a giving heart. The Bible says that the liberal soul make it fat. You know what that means? That means when you are giving, he makes sure that your blessing is overweight. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, my account is about to be overweight. I'm not. My, my account needs to go on the biggest loser. Come on, talk to me. I want to have it pressed down, shaken together, and run it over. That ain't what I came to preach today. Y'all give me a good 15 minutes, maybe 17, and I'll get out of your way. But I, I just want to make sure that we set the precedent for which we are here. We are here not only to worship, when we amalgamate, it's not only to worship, but it's also to gather. Amen. If you read the Bible, they never gathered without giving. Amen. See, we miss God when we gather and don't give. Hey, hey, hey. Did I just say something? Hey, hey, hey. And, and, and I don't care, you could have just lost your job, you could be broke, I don't want your sad story. Why don't you go up under the seat of your car, grab a handful of that change that dropped between the seat so that you can sow something because the principle is right. If you give, God will make sure it is given back to you. What shall I render unto God for all of his Benefits. If you learn how to give now, you won't have to worry about scholarships. Come on, talk to me, somebody. If you learn how to give now, you won't have to worry about when everybody else is worrying about their job and layoffs. But you got to get some seed in the ground and stop and listen and stop penny pinching God. But stop penny. Look at your neighbor. Say stop penny pinching God. We stingy with God. We, we ain't stingy. When you go up here to Dillard's and you and, and, and Cato's and, and Macy's and and and, and, and Sachs and come on talk to me and, and you go up here and you go up to Auto Zone and, 
And you go up to the soup store. Give it to me. Give it to me. Let me have that. That's what I want. Oh, yeah. We get what we want. But when it comes to God, we try to figure out how less we can give God. Don't you know these lights aren't free? Am I first thing? I, 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 this air conditioning ain't free. Let me help you. These musicians ain't free. Y'all love that music. I just saw y'all bumping up something. But now, if we don't pay the musicians and all we got is tambourines, you get upset. Well, I'm going to another church because they don't have the musician. And let me help you one more time. This pastor ain't free. Amen. Oh, y'all quiet. Boy, you can hear a rat looking nice. If you want a free pastor, you don't want a real word. As a matter of fact, the next time you, you, you decide to bless him and he said, no, 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 don't give me. You make him take it because your blessing is intri intricately linked, inextricably linked to getting seed into his life. Gave yeah. 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 over $2,000 to my pastor this past week during the Holy Convocation yeah. and didn't blink about it because I know at some point God is going to give a blessing to me that I don't have room enough to receive. Yeah. All right, all right. Let me let me let me get to the word of God. The reason why I said all of that is because I made a covenant with God to be a blessing, and I want to sow this seed into your pastor's life, um, and, and I want to to express to him how much I love him and I appreciate him. Why don't you do me a favor one more time? Why don't you stand on your feet, clap your hands for this great man? Get your Bibles. We're going to preach now. Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2, verse 1 through 9. Did your wife take that from you? <laughs> Haggai chapter 2. Oh, no. Because my wife be like this. Just pass it on over real quick. She'll give it. I know she'll give it. Yeah. Me. Let me let the ink dry on the check before you take it. Haggai chapter 2, verse 1 through 9. When you discover the word of the Lord, please signify by standing on your feet. Father, I stretch my hand. To thee, no other, no other hell I know if I withdraw the hand from. Zerubbabel, 
son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, to Joshua, son of Yozadak, the high priest. And to the remnant of the people asked them, Who of you is left who saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Does it not seem to you like nothing? But now be strong, Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, Joshua, son of Josadak the high priest. Be strong all ye people of the land, declares the Lord. And work for I am with you. Won't you look at somebody and say he's with you. Amen. Declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I covenant with you when you came out of this Egypt. This is what I promised to you when you came out of Egypt. And my spirit remains among you. Aren't you glad God is still with you? Look at your neighbor and say, through your rough times, through your failings, through your hard times, he's still with you. You ought to be excited about that. My spirit remains among you. Do not fear. Verse 6, this is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth. The sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations. Tell your neighbors that there's some shaking going on right now. I will shake all nations. And what is desired by all nations will come. And I will fill the house with his glory. Hallelujah. I will fill the house with his glory. Are y'all with me? Says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine. Lord help me. And the gold it is mine. Now, 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 you ought to really be happy about that because God is saying to us that the silver and the gold that you are wanting is his. And if he's your daddy, my daddy, my earthly father never withheld anything that I needed. He always gave it to me because it was his. Look at your neighbor say, the gold and silver belongs to God. Silver is mine. And Gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house. Are y'all listening to me? You hear me, little Scott? The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house. Which means that the glory that you experience here will be greater than the glory you experienced on Hallelujah Boulevard. Now y'all missed it. What did y'all experience in Nightdale? Every time you move, the glory is going to get greater. Y'all missed it. Look at your neighbor and say, every time I move, the glory will be greater. And in this place, I will grant peace. That's prophetic word. Y'all not listening. In this place, I will grant peace. Okay, let me come over here because my y'all gonna holler at your boy. In this place, I will grant peace. You know what? You know what? Y'all say peace with me. Peace. Peace. Now, now, now. I love to have a little change in my pocket, but I'd rather have peace. I love a good meal. But I put up with a mediocre meal as long as it's a peaceful setting. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, in this season, I just want God's peace. Boy, oh, you preaching in here. In this hour, I want, I want to be able to do ministry in peace. Listen, I fight the devil. I just don't want to fight the people that God called me to serve. I want In this place I will grant peace, declares the almighty God. Father, bless this witness and charge it with your power. Give me a moment of strength to deliver what you have given to me, to your people. They need a word. They can't tolerate with pulpit bedtime stories of gospel lullabies, but they need an authentic word 
from you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Why don't you shake somebody by the hand before you sit down. I know you're ready to sit down. Shake about three people by the hand and tell them, get ready for your second hand. Shake somebody by the hand and say, get ready for your second hand. And give them my, give them my subtopic. Tell them it's going to get greater later. Come on, tell somebody. Come on, come on. Give somebody a high five and tell them it's going to get greater later. Come on. Why don't y'all holler at your boy and tell you it's going to get greater later. We are, we are halfway there now. We are halfway there. The Lord has blessed us to sojourn from January to July. And I think it appropriate to take a critical glance as we prepare for the second half of this year. Um, June marks the close of the first half, but July signifies the beginning of the second half of the year. There are six months in a year from January to June is six months, and from July to December is six months, 12 months in a year. 12 is a significant number because 12 is the number of order. So God normally gives you 12 months to sometimes get things in order or government or govern or organize some things. Let me tell you something. It is the halfway point where we take the opportunity to take a critical glance at what worked and what did not work, what went well and what did not go well, what you need to continue to do and what you need not to do anymore. Yeah, I, I am convinced that God, that it is God's will that you win. And even though you might be losing right now, he has brought you here to the Way Church locker room to prepare you to conquer the second half of the year. Uh, you know, most games or most teams win or lose at halftime. Oh, mm. Yeah, it is the halftime for any other team. It is that time where you can consider your ways and consider what is working and makes the necessary adjustments so that you can do better in the second half. Look at your neighbor say the second half is going to be better for you. So look at somebody and tell them this. Come on and get in this locker room. Come on and get in this. The prophet Haggai has been commissioned by God to carry a two-chapter message to the post-exilic children of Israel. They are, they, are, they are leaving exile. They, are, they have been in exile in Babylon for 70 years. And they were released to return to their homeland only to discover that the temple, God's house, the substratum of their existence have been destroyed. Mm -hmm. Don't leave me now. It's going to get better. Uh, they, 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 they finally get back after. It's like being on a trip for several days. And, and, and uh, when you go on a vacation, me and my wife, we just left Europe. And we were there for about 10, 11 days. And, but after that, that, that 10, or, uh, 10 or 11 day, I, I was kind of longing to be back home. And now imagine having been away and longing to be back home only to come home and find out that the home that you come to is in shambles. Yes, the, 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 the center of the Israel community, the Jewish community, is their temple. It's where everything takes place. It, 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 it is not just a place where they come to have church and dance like we are. It is their life. It is the light of Israel. The temple was the place that held the community together. And I believe that if we get back to that idea where the church is the central focal point for the community, then I believe that the people in our community will begin to reflect God that we serve. Now, they don't respect the church. They don't respect the church because we don't respect the church. Oh, 
why it's so quiet. You can hear a rat making nice. Yeah, they don't respect the church. Uh, they come to church. You come to church any old kind of way. Smell it any kind of way. Look at any kind of way. You just come to church and, and you chew gum and put it under the brand new chairs we got. And, and you see a piece of paper on the floor and say, Pastor, uh, get that directly. Uh, we don't respect the church. So now when sinners come, they don't respect the church. But God wants to bring uh, the worship community back to a prominence in our uh, uh, community so that now we can we can level uh, and build a community the way he desired. Listen, it's not community then church is church then community. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we need to get our worship together. According to history, when they arrived home in uh, 537 BC, they immediately commenced the daunting task of rebuilding the temple. However, one year later in 536 BC, it is if they lose interest and the good work that they began screeches to an abrupt halt. And for 16 years, God's house. Israel's center of worship remained a junk pile. Yes, sir. They started working to rebuild the temple, but then they took a break for 16 years. They started out excited when they got saved and got home. They started out excited and they were on fire for God. But then somewhere between that and 16 years later, they lose their fight. Don't you look at somebody and give them this command for me. Say, whatever you do. Say it like my uncle used to say, whatsoever you do. Don't lose your fire. Fire. I know y'all were excited when y'all first got in this building. Y'all were running around and about to tear it up before y'all could build it up. Uh, but don't allow the enemy to cause you to lull in a place of lackadaisicalness. Don't allow the devil to get you to a place where you become satiated and satisfied. You got to make up in your mind that I'm going to kindle my fire. And that's why we go through storms and tribulation because God never desired for us to stay where we are. The Bible says as the eagle stirred the nest, so stirred my soul, O oh God. Which means what the eagle will do when it's time for the little eagle eggs to get out it will start pulling all of the comfortable cotton and soft plush places so that they can hit a thorn and they will roll over and hit a thorn and they will roll over and hit a thistle and something in the mind of the little eagle says I'm no longer welcome in this place look at your neighbor said neighbor you've been in this place long enough and the mountainside has been rough the struggle is over now I came to let somebody know it's time for you to move out of the place that you're in and move with fire and exuberance it's time for you to get your fire back why don't you give somebody a high five and say it's time for you to get your fire back the question that sees the corridors of my cerebral cortex is what caused them to become godly apathetic? Come on, sir. You know what apathy is. Let me give y'all a $2 word. Apathy says, I don't even care no more. I'm not moved anymore. So for 16 years, they went without worship, walking by this pile of rubbish. When they understand how worship, how important worship is to their livelihood, they've been in prison for 70 years, finally get what they've been praying for, only to wait 16 more years and do nothing. Look at your neighbor and ask them the question, how are you going to act when you finally get what you've been praying for? Some of us pray years for a car. Get a car and won't come to church. Some of you pray years for a house. Get a house and won't even have a pastor to come over and bless it. Some of you wait years for a boo. Come on, talk to me. You've been praying for a man. Come on. You've been praying for a woman for years. Finally get them and you spend more time out of town than you do in God's house. You better be 
careful. Close in the text, we will discover that the Israelites suffer from what I call spiritual integration. Spiritual integration. Uh, somehow, during their imprisonment in Babylon, they were infected with pagan worship, customs, and practices, and it had diluted the potency and intensity of their commitment to God and his works. I believe that the reason one, even though it's a wonderful tool and we're on social media right now, but I believe that when we invest our mind and brain space into too much social media, we become influenced with the spirits. The Bible says that Satan is the prince of the power of the atmosphere, which means he floats in the waves, in the airways. He floats around on social media and television and when we get too much of that in our spirit it's hard for us to come into God's house and lift our hands and lift our voices and we become skeptics because we watch too much YouTube exposés about church and pastors who don't do the right thing in their churches. Let me tell you something those pastors that are mega millionaires make up one less than one percent of the pastors in this most of pastors in the United States are bivocational. Do you know what that means? That means they work a full-time job and come pray for you and pastor you. They work all day Friday and pray all day Saturday for a word for you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, be careful what you allow in your ear gates and your eye gates. Let me preach to the Joshua generation since they look like they won't go sleep on it. Let me tell you something. Everything that comes to the movies and everything that comes on the internet you don't need to open your spirit up too because some stuff is a trap for the enemy that wants you to think crazy I wish I had some help in here some stuff you gotta shut it down I dare you to shake a neighbor by the hand I said shake your neighbor by the hand and tell your neighbor say neighbor we gotta shut it down in this season we gotta shut down gossip in this season if you got folk that got some church gossip Give somebody a high five and say shut it down Because I can't allow anything to pour water on my fire If you can't fuel my fire, leave me alone Your saints used to say if you can't help me, please don't stop me Move out of my way and don't try to block me I got a race to run and I'm running by faith and I'll see God's face. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, don't allow anybody to dilute your potency. You don't know. That's why I love when young people get saved. Because young people are more potent than the older people. We have been diluted by life and drama and gossip and whisper and murmuring and complaints. It is said that when a king cobra has little cobras, when she hatches the little cobras, that the venom in the little cobra, the baby cobras, are ten times more potent than the venom in the mother, which means that's why the devil is after our new Christians because he understands that in that first few years you have the power, influence, and potency to change somebody's life for Jesus Christ. I believe God to do some reconstruction in our heart. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. I believe God to give me my fire back. I know I've been in the way a long time, but I want Fire, 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 fall on me. Like the day of Pentecost, I dare you to look, lift your head and shout fire. From the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, I need the power of the Holy Ghost. I dare you to throw your hand up and open your mouth and shout fire. with those pagans. 
pagans. And so they picked up the practices of those pagans. Lord, help me finish this. They picked up the practices of those pagans. And now they're not as excited. They're not as on fire, if you will, to do the will of God. So they go through a 16 year low where they stop the work. And I believe I came all the way from down the street to let somebody know it's time for you to pick up the work again. Why don't you tell somebody it's time for you to restart the work of God. Some of y'all, you let church drama steal your fire. You let gossip steal your fire. Lord, and that was the plan of the enemy. You even let the pastor steal your fire. What do you mean by that? He put something on old Facebook and you thought he was talking about you. And so now you went from being a doorkeeper in the house of my God to do a do drop in. Remember, do drop every now and then. Look at your neighbor, sir, neighbor. I don't know about you, but I feel my fire being recovered. I feel my Holy Ghost turning. And my fire turning. I feel like God is bringing me back to a place where I can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I, I used to come through my house and if, if the devil was in the soap, I'd cast the devil out of the soap. to some of us. We start out with a roaring fire for God. The strict adherences to what pleases and displeases him. But like a cocktail during happy hour, we mix a little flesh, a little of the world, and a little of our selfish desires. And our raging fire is reduced to an occasional puff of smoke every now and then and so now we can't be preachers we got to be cheerleaders so when we come to the house of God and gather because you don't have any fire anymore we got to say lift your hand we got to take you through all these kinds of spiritual calisthenics lift your hands shake your neighbor by the hand come on scream turn around do something run shout leap when, when I was a little boy the saints would be so on fire when they hit the door they would yell out hallelujah I asked the mother, I said, why do you do that? Because she said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his court with praise. I dare you to look at somebody and point your finger to him and say, I'm getting my fire back. The devil is a snagger to liar and his mama got false teeth. I am getting my... Pagan worship. Can I, can I have 10 more minutes? Joshua, can I have 10 more minutes? <laughs> All right, they told me now. They all get mad it's because they told me. <laughs> Pagan worship differs from the one God worship in that uh, we serve him. God in turn loads us daily with benefits. On the contrary, pagans believe that the way you please God or their gods is through first pleasing yourself. Diana in the temple of Diana they would gather around the statues of Diana and they would have all kind of filthy lewd acts around the altar because they believe to get close to God you gotta please yourself even the Rastafarians in order for them to get close to God first they gotta get high they smoke a little herb and then they see God Lord have mercy oh, God y'all mad at me all oh, y'all weed smokers done shut down on me but I came to let you you know that God don't need no weed. He don't need no sex. He don't need no incense. He's fire right by himself. Look at your neighbor, said neighbor. If I don't have a musician, I still gotta praise. If I don't have a drummer, I don't know why you pushing me like this, boy. But I still have a praise. Look at your neighbor, said neighbor. I gotta praise. And I gotta get it out. See, yeah. I just want about ten of y'all that got a real praise. So jump on your feet and give it some. 
In, in children, the children of Israel, and even in the church. Now, we have become selfish with our worship. There's no people that have become more self selfish than the people in church nowadays. As a matter of fact, you even got some off, uh, uh, ignorant preachers and prophets and apostles and bishops uh, stand on the pulpit and say, touch your neighbor, it's all about me now. Uh, and that devil is a stinking lie. Uh, because God always taught us uh, to help others before we help ourselves. Uh, he said, the way you get is you get. Uh, the way you go up is better by going down. He always teaches us to give. For God so loved the world that he gave. You got to understand something. That when you become selfish, you cut off the pipeline between God and your blessing. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is not a do me season. This is, I'm talking to the way church. This is, tell somebody, this is not a do me season. We doing God this season. Lord, I wish I had some help in here. Tell your neighbor, say, we got to do God in this season. So note, Haggai chapter 1 verse 9, God says, Wow, you enjoy the comfort of your plush palaces. My house looks like a pile of rubbish. Lord have mercy my house looks like trash I told the saints of God this morning we having a little issue with our air condition I said we got to buy a new air condition but y'all go home and you sit and put it on 67 and you take your stockings on and you spread your toes and enjoy the air condition while God's house suffers and then you get here and you're fanning and say pastor need to do something about that air condition. Oh, what you understand that God never intended for your house to be better than his house. As a matter of fact, before Solomon could build his palace, first he had to build the temple and the temple was far greater than his palace. I came to let somebody know in here what you make happen for God's house. God will make happen for your house. If you want God stuff, but the stuff we have is not adequate. You are working harder than you have ever worked. You put you on your grind. You chasing paper. You hustling. You bought that coin. You trying to get that bag. Come on, talk to me. <laughs> but it's not good enough. Your wealth will come when you learn how to bless God's house. Look at your neighbor say, you're welcome. We'll come when you learn how to bless God. I have things, but I don't possess the peace of God to accompany the things. Lord, help me preach in here. If you were to be honest in here today, you would admit, Pastor, I'm losing at halftime. My Lord! I'm losing at halftime. But and if you if you wouldn't be honest, some of us in here right now, we are in a deficit at halftime. Lord, help me preach in here, y'all. Y'all got mad at me now. You can you can hear a red leg and ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm at a deficit at halftime. 
So what do I do? I'm so glad you asked. Implied in this book, God gives us detailed insights into how we will win in the second half. The first thing he tells us to do in the text, he says, assess yourself. Look at your neighbor say, take inventory of yourself. You know, we spend too much time trying to um, examine other folk lives. I mean, we walk around with a white jacket on like we the doctor and taking other folks' uh, uh, spiritual temperature. When you got to learn how to examine yourself, the Williams brother said, take six months to mind your own business and six months to leave other folks' business alone. When was the last time that you did a self audit? Come on, it's always somebody fault. A middle boy, you get in trouble, it's always somebody fault. Well, it is he did this and she said that and that made me do this. We are responsible, Shoanna, for our own behavior. So we have to take, we have to assess ourselves. I can't hear nobody talking to me. You gotta, what did you do? To get yourself in the position. The reason why the children of Israel were in the, uh, a captivity was because they stopped honoring and obeying God. Amen. 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 We got to be like Jonah and say, I'm the cause of the storm. Lord have mercy. As you approach the halfway point uh, in this year, you have to ask and answer two critical questions. Where am I and how did I get here? Boy, I done slowed it down for all the lovers in the house. Where am I? Won't you look at the neighbor and say, where am I? And how did I get here? It is these pertinent inquiries that will help you with your self-assessment. Note the conditions of the people in Haggai chapter 1 and 6. God says, you have so much and brought in little. You eat, but you do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You're clothed, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes in it. Some of y'all working two and three jobs and you still can't keep your lights on. Oh, yeah. So folk, folk, pastor, I, got a, I, had to, I had to get two part-time jobs and, and you know I'm trying to do my own little Mary Kay on the side and I got a full-time job, pastor, and I can't come to church for the next few 52 weeks. I ain't going to be in service. Don't even look for me, pastor. But you still can't pay your bills. You can't get your transmission fixed. You in around town because you don't have a car. You are you doing like my daddy used to say, you hustling backwards. You gotta make some self-assessments. Where am I and how did I get here? In other words, God is telling us that when you neglect him and his work, he will allow you to remain in a perpetual deficit. Time is gone. How is it? How is it that we learn to enjoy the creation but not the creator? See, I ain't, get time, I ain't get time to do all this this morning. How is it that we learn how to enjoy the creation but not the creator? We're more excited about things than God. Yes, sir. I, I, we did a little shopping and I, and I bought a couple of things. We bought a few things back. And, uh, and, and I wore some shoes um, on one of the nights and it was hurting my toe. Some, some expensive designer shoes. And I said to myself, I said, I ain't gonna wear these tonight. Somebody asked me why. Because I knew it would prevent me from giving praise to the God that gave me the ability to buy them. Come on, sir. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, say, you can't magnify the creation over the creator. 
Come on, I say, tell your neighbor, you can't magnify the creation over the creator. Because if I praise the creator, he will continue to create things for me. Lord, I wish I had some help. Love it, if you're going to win second half, you have to be honest with where you are. You have to be transparent enough to admit I'm not winning because I prioritize my wants over God. over God. Lord, the evangelist just left and the, and the pastor came out. We are, we are celebrating. Lord, have mercy. We're celebrating stuff. Mm -hmm. we, we have become, oh, I want this and I want that and I want this and I want that and I want to go here and I want to go there and I want to do this and I want to do that. But then you come to God's house and you withhold glory from him. Look at your neighbor say the Bible says uh, he will not share his glory with no one. <laughs> There's no, listen, let me tell you something. If you glorify your things, God will decrease your things uh, in your eyes so that he can be lifted up. And if he is lifted up, he'll draw all men. Number two, after you assess yourself, then you have to acquire instruction. Come on, sir. I got to leave y'all alone. Y'all tired of me. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to acquire some instructions. To make an accurate assessment, then you have to acquire instructions. God tells them, if you want to end this laborious losing cycle, there are some specific things that you must do. In chapter 1, verse 7, he says, consider your way. Lord have mercy. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the temple that I may, may take pleasure in it and be glorified. Essentially, God is telling them it's time to go back to work. And I came all the way here to let the way church know. I know y'all are happy about this peaceful building in this place and the prosperity that you're experiencing, but you can't sit down on your seat of do nothing. It's time to go back to work. I don't care if you're old as Methuselah or as young as a newborn babe. It's time for you to go back to work. Shake your neighbor by the hand. Shake it like a salt shaker. I said shake it like a salt shaker. Action neighbor, it's time to go back to work. It's time to go back to work. The Bible says any man had put his hand to the plow and looked back is not fit for the kingdom of God. The Bible also says whatever man uh, put in his heart to do, let him do it with all of his might. Look at somebody and tell him it's time for us to go to work. There's too many empty chairs in this church. It's time to go back to work. We got room in the back. It's time to go to work. You've been lulled into a place of complacency. It's time to go back to work. Slap somebody high by and your neighbor. It's time to go back to work. Yeah, go get some wood. Tell your neighbor, say, go get some wood. Go get some stones. Go get some brick. Go get some mortar. Get a trial. Get a sledgehammer. Get some uh, water. It's time for us to build the kingdom of God. Have I got a witness in here? Tell Good evening, children. Farewell. I'm in Georgia. But I gotta go. Before I go, I came all the way from Z Town to let y'all know in Wendell it's time to go back to work. A charge to keep our hands. Oh Lord, and a God to glorify. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, while I'm here, I'm gonna work while it's day. For the night come and no man can do any work. Tell somebody on the other side of you, say, neighbor, I will work until Jesus comes. I can't, I can't rust out, but I wear out, but I will say, Lord, until I die. Never got a witness in there. Yeah, yeah, I remember.
One of my first jobs was at Hardy's on 301 in Wilson, North Carolina. And I would come a little early because I had to get a ride from my daddy. Yeah. And I would be sitting out in the restaurant waiting, waiting to work. And my manager would come out there and say, Bowser, since you're early, go ahead on and clock in. That means once I'm on the clock, I got to go to work. I want you to get out of your seat. Go shake somebody. Drop the hand. And shimmy. It's time to clock in. Clock in. I will work. About my father's business. See ya. See ya. Good evening now. Yeah. I'm in Georgia. Yes, sir. I feel like preaching. I wish I had about ten folk that shall preach about the boy.
worshiping and giving God in that your house be building something better. Yeah, he is, he is, he's building something better. My mama used to say, I'm sending up my timber every day. Tell you to get out of your seat.
We give you praise. We thank you for better. We thank you for greater. We thank you that the second half Hallelujah. is going to testify of your glory. Hallelujah. I got the whole shit my hand here. That the second half is going to reveal how powerful you are to turn 12 months around. Keep it 
in reaching distance. It's more trips are coming. Some for ministry and some for leadership. Because preserving your health and your strength so you can do what He wants you to do. And you can. There's some interesting things about to take place in the way church. You just say what I hear. He's going to take your stumbling blocks and make them step in stones. I know you said to yourself, boy, we put some money in that place. You're not going to miss that. Every dime of it is coming back to you. It's going to come back to you. The reason why it ain't came yet because it ain't gained enough weight yet. season where we need to stretch ourselves beyond where we are right now so that we can see his glory in a real way. And we need to take the emotionalism emotional tied to church we need to pack that up. And we need to trade in our feelings for our faith. Yes sir. Because most of us, we church based on feelings and not based on faith. You know, old, the old, in, in Terrence in the old days, two saints could get in an argument. But none of them, even if they didn't talk, none of them stayed home that Sunday. They ain't stay they show up in my church. And the Spirit of the Lord would move on them in that service and before you saw it you would see them in the corner talking to each other then they would come out of that top, that corner speaking to them oh, no, 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 no. you knew God had already resolved it now I won't get mad at the other both of them don't come to church they make God suffer for their own interpersonal conflict that's feelings over faith hallelujah now God is calling us faith over feelings Pastor didn't ask me to do this, but I feel like I feel a need to sow. I know we've already raised off and we've been giving all day, but I just want to share. I want, I want you to decide whether you're going to give ten or twenty dollars. I want you to get it real quick and put some seed in this word. This seed is for your second half. This seed is for your second half. And I want you to come and lay it at the altar. Let me pray for you first, Father. I pray that as we move into this offering. Offertory moment that it won't be emotionalism, but it will be all faith. We move in faith because we're moving into greater, and we thank you for the greater. Tomorrow starts our greater. We spoke it today, we don't see it tomorrow, and we give you praise for it. And we move in faith for increase in Jesus' name, amen. If you gave on. On, uh, what's that, Cash App? I just want you to raise your phone up and say, I did it on Cash App. I see you, I see you. If you got cash, a check, I want you to come bring it now. Bring it now, bring it now. Bring it now. Bring it now. Hallelujah. And we bless you in the name of Jesus. And we bless you in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's give it. We bless you in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, well, I don't have 10 or 20, but I got, I'll bring the best thing I got. I want you to get it in. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. That's right, baby. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. You're not going to miss this, I promise you. You're not going to miss this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on again. Come on again. Hallelujah. Thank you for this opportunity to share. I took more time than I originally intended, but I felt my help coming. Felt my help coming. You can go home now and kick your feet up and watch Sunday best. Amen. Bless you, Father. Bless you. Bless you. And we speak strength upon you now. We 
you speak strength upon you now. Even as you walk up here to sow your seed. And pray. And sow that seed and to strengthen your body. And your legs and your hips. Hallelujah. Praise. We give you praise. Clap your hands and don't start clapping. Stop clapping until I stop clapping. Father, bless the gift and forgive them. You turn it on the fold. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give God praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, y'all can do better than that. Such a premium word. Such a premium word. Hallelujah. It's going to get better. It's going to be greater. How many of y'all believe that tonight? Hallelujah. Come on, praise the Lord. When you start your Monday morning, get up looking for greater. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The word has declared greater. And we thank the Lord for the word tonight. We thank God for the messenger tonight. I was immensely blessed. Hallelujah. What a word. Didn't it seem like he just mirrored everything that we talked about on this morning. He was right in the vein, wasn't he? Wasn't no foreign word. It was right in the vein. Lord have mercy. To God be the glory. Amen. We love you. Amen. God bless you, all of you. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord, brothers and sisters, for the God thank you. We give God the all oh, great church. Let's give them a hand. A couple of hours of support, my brother. Praise the Lord. We love you. Praise God. We're getting ready to let you go. Amen. Wait, church, those of you that stayed for the second service. Give yourselves a hand and praise the Lord. Listen, I, I, don't, I don't count it likely that you stayed. Some of you have to go an hour, an hour and a half back home, praise the Lord, in all different directions. And you made it your business to stay here to the end. The Lord will reward you for your faithfulness. Hallelujah. He will set you on high for the kindness that you have shown to the house of prayer. We thank God for you. Amen. We're getting ready to let you go. Everyone standing. Come on, praise the Lord. Everyone standing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for the word that you blessed us with in this house. We will not be a forgetful hearer, but we will put into practice everything that you told us. We will assess ourselves. We will go to work building your kingdom, expanding the kingdom. We thank you. Thank you for the man of God that you use to deposit such a wonderful, rich word in our life. We pray for his added strength. We come up in the name of Jesus with the blood. In the retaliation of the enemy, in the attack, hallelujah, we cancel all the signs. In Jesus' name. Now God dismiss us from this building, but not from your holy presence. But with us as we travel over the highways. Whether we go far, whether we go near, and bring us back together again at the appointed time. And we'll give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Hands lifted all over the building. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Let's rule and abide henceforth now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen.